Hey everyone, Tio here. Today I'm reviewing the Huawei Mate Pad 10.4 2022. This is a beautiful looking budget tablet from Huawei and disclaimer, this is a review unit provided by Huawei. In this video, I'm just going to present to you my findings so that you can decide whether or not this is worth the money. And this is priced from 268 Singapore dollars onwards. And this is the base model with 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage. This video is going to be quite long, so if you want to save time, you can check out the text review that I have already written on my blog. The link is in the video description below, or use the timestamps provided to jump to different sections of this video. This review is not my usual artist review. This tablet does support the Huawei M Pencil 2, but I don't have the adapter that's needed to pair the M Pencil 2 to the tablet, so you can't just attach the pen to the side of the tablet for charging and for pairing. Anyway, I don't think the drawing performance is going to be very different compared to other MatePad tablets that support the Huawei M Pencil 2. So if you want to see how the pen performs when it comes to drawing, you can check out my review for the MatePad Pro 10.8 2021 and the MatePad 11. Let me give you the bottom line up front. This is a beautiful tablet with solid build quality and it feels really good in hand thanks to the curved edges. The display is bright, the colors look good out of the box, the resolution is 2000 by 1200 so the visuals are considered quite sharp. The battery life is at least 2 days, usually 3 days so the battery life is excellent. This tablet has four speakers, two on this side and two on the other side, and the audio quality is fantastic. It uses USB-C for charging, but the transfer speed is just USB 2. The most important thing you need to know about the Huawei Mate Pad 10.4 2022 is there are two model numbers, and these are the two model numbers. Model BAH3-W09 comes with Kirin 820, and model BAH4-W09 comes with Kirin 710A. According to benchmarks, Kirin 820 is around 80% faster compared to Kirin 710A, and GPU performance is about six times better compared to Kirin 710A. So unfortunately for me, this review unit comes with the Kirin 710A, so the performance that you will see in this video is not indicative of the performance that you will get with Kirin 820. And when you are buying the tablet, make sure to get the model that comes with Kirin 820. Ever since Huawei started using Harmony OS for their tablets, I have reservations recommending their tablets because of the lack of Google Play Store. But I'm happy to tell you that installing Google Play Store is now very easy. It's just a single tap or click process. All you have to do is go inside Huawei App Gallery, look for this app called G Space, and once you install GSpace, you have Google Play Store and you can install all the Google apps. And you also have access to all the apps that are available from the Google Play Store. If you have past purchases, all those purchases will be restored and you can buy apps from the Google Play Store as well. The main limitation with this tablet, more specifically with this review unit that is equipped with the Kirin 710A processor is gaming performance with graphics intensive game is not smooth, it's sluggish, which is why I highly recommend you go with the tablet that is equipped with Kirin 820. When you are not gaming or when you are just playing very simple 2D games, the performance is smoother, it's lag free. For non-gaming purposes with Kirin 710A, performance is smooth, there is no lag until you have too many apps open. This tablet only has 4 gigs of RAM, loading web pages is fast, streaming videos is fine, there is no lag, there is no latency when it comes to watching videos. So this tablet is actually great for video consumption, for web browsing, checking social media, 
and there is a micro SD card slot for external storage expansion. So if you are looking for an affordable tablet for general purpose use, the Huawei Mate Pad 10.4 is worth considering. Just make sure you get the model with Kirin 820. Alright, let's move on to the full review. Let's see what's included in the box. This is a USB-A to USB-C charging cable, a 22 watt charger, a tray ejection tool, and a quick start guide which is not shown here. Let's look at the design of the tablet. This is a very beautiful tablet. The bezels are thin and uniform on all four sides. The corners are rounded off, the sides are curved. This tablet feels really good in hand. The camera is here on the horizontal side and on the back there is another camera. The back plate is quite susceptible to fingerprints so you may want to have a case on the tablet. And this is a rather thin tablet. The weight is 460 grams so it's quite lightweight for a tablet this size. There are four speakers, two on this side and two on this side. The audio is loud and it's clear. The audio quality is fantastic when you are playing games or watching shows. The power button is located here on the left and volume buttons are on the top. This is the micro SD card slot. The tablet that has LTE should have a tray that can hold a nano SIM card. The display size is 10.4 inches and the resolution is 2000 by 1200. Pixelation is not that noticeable with this combination of resolution and display size. I would consider the visuals to be quite sharp. The display is LCD and the refresh rate is 60Hz so when you're moving icons around or when you are scrolling web pages, there is the usual 60Hz jutter which is common on all displays with 60Hz refresh rate. General performance of this tablet is quite smooth when it comes to switching between apps. It's pretty smooth. Let's launch Google Maps. So this Google Maps was installed through the GSpace app. So this Google Maps will take a bit longer to load. Sometimes it loads faster, but now as you can see, it loads a bit more slowly. But once it's up, the performance is quite smooth. Just for comparison purposes, I'm going to show you how much time it takes to launch Google Maps on the Huawei Mate Pad Pro 10.8 with Snapdragon 870 versus Kirin 710A. Snapdragon 870 is slightly faster compared to Kirin 820, so the performance that you see here should be quite similar to Mate Pad 10.4 with Kirin 820. So Google Maps here, let's launch. And now you can see on the Mate Pad 10.4, this app launches so much faster compared to what you saw earlier. So sometimes the apps will launch fast, sometimes for some reason it will launch a bit more slowly. But on the Mate Pad Pro, the apps always launch really quickly. This tablet runs on Harmony OS which is quite similar to Android OS which is why you can install apps from the Google Play Store and also apps from the APK libraries. The default app store on this tablet is called Huawei App Gallery and inside Huawei App Gallery there are many apps mostly for the Chinese market. There are some English apps such as Microsoft Office, Opera browsers, but not all the popular English apps are available here. For example, let's do a search for Facebook. Facebook is actually not available from the Huawei app gallery and sometimes they will have links to where you can install Facebook from third-party apps, more specifically from APK libraries. So once you download the APK file, you can just install Facebook. Be careful when you are searching for apps within the Huawei app gallery because there are many apps with the same name or the same icon. So I just did a search for the Opera web browser. If you see the install button, it means the app is from the Huawei app gallery. If you see the get button, it means the app is hosted on a third-party website. 
If you want to download apps from third-party websites, just make sure the source is reputable. Most of the links to third-party websites are to APK Pure. So let's press the Get button and see what happens. So this is APK Pure. The apps are hosted here on this website, and this website is quite safe. All right, let me show you how you can install Google Play Store. So from within Huawei App Gallery, do a search for G space, G S P A C E. And you will see the G space app, which I have already installed. So let me just open the G space app to show you what's inside. So now installing Google Play Store is just a one tap process. Just tap on the install button and you will have this app. G space is free, but it's supported by ads, which are quite irritating. So I highly recommend you pay the one-time purchase to remove the ads. All the icons you see here are actually shortcuts to the Google Play Store. For example, let's install Microsoft Teams. So once you tap on the icon, it will load G Store. More specifically, it will load Google Play Store within G space. And here, when you install, Microsoft Teams is actually installed from the Google Play Store. And this is the Google Play Store home page. You can sign into your Google account and it will restore all your past purchases. And if you want to buy apps or games, you can do so with your Google account. As mentioned earlier, apps that are installed from G Space can take a bit more time to launch. For example, here I'm trying to launch YouTube and you can see it takes a few seconds. But once the app is up and running, the performance is smooth. The apps that were installed from GSpace will have this little GSpace icon at the corner and the native apps are apps without that icon. If the app you want is available from the Huawei App Gallery, you can just install from there. If not, you can search Google Play Store for that app. The main difference is the loading time. So for apps that were installed from GSpace, it takes a bit longer to load. And here it actually loaded much faster than I expected. This app is Amazon Prime Video and video streaming looks pretty smooth and the resolution looks good. So the resolution is limited by the resolution of the display, in this case 2000 by 1002. So the maximum resolution you can get is 1080p, 60 frames per second. When it comes to gaming, 2D games will work fine, as in the performance of 2D games is very smooth, lag-free. But when it comes to 3D gaming with intensive graphics, you can expect gaming performance to be a bit more sluggish. This is the MatePad 10.4 with Kirin 710A, which is not ideal for graphics intensive 3D games. So you can see here the animation is actually quite sluggish. So definitely go with the MatePad 10.4 that is equipped with Kirin 820, which according to benchmarks has six times better GPU performance. This is, this is really too sluggish for me to enjoy this game. The last thing I want to talk about is the Huawei ecosystem. If you have other Huawei devices, you may have access to Huawei Smart Office or Huawei Super Device features. For example, here I have a Huawei laptop and I can actually connect this laptop to the tablet and use the tablet as an extended display. So you have to open Huawei PC Manager, look for the tablet wirelessly and now these two are connected. I can drag my window here to the tablet and move it back. The performance is quite smooth. All right, let's see what other smart office features you can get. Let's view tablet files. Yep, so now that these two are connected, I can view the files that are on my tablet very easily. So the tablet will appear under this PC as a wireless external storage. And when you double click, you can go inside to access all the folders. Transferring files to and fro is very straightforward. To transfer a file from your computer to the tablet, you just drag the file 
into the folder that's on the tablet. And from the tablet, if you want to transfer a file to the laptop, just tap the share button and look for the laptop. If you are using a computer from another brand and you want to share files wirelessly, you will need to use some third-party app or third-party websites. So to have this wireless file sharing functionality built into Harmony OS and into the computer is actually quite convenient. Let's talk about accessories. So these are some of the accessories available for the Huawei Mate Pad 10.4. This tablet has pen support and this is the Huawei M Pencil 2. To be able to use the Huawei M Pencil 2, you actually need an adapter so that you can pair the pen with the tablet. Without that adapter, you cannot use this pen with the adapter. So if you want to buy the pen, make sure you buy the Huawei M Pencil package. Don't just buy the M Pencil and make sure it's M Pencil version 2. So this M Pencil 2 unfortunately doesn't attach to the side of the tablet for pairing and charging, which is why you need that separate adapter. This is the keyboard case, which is actually made for the Mate Pad 10.8. And this keyboard case is not compatible with the 10.4, so you need to get the keyboard case that's made specifically for the 10.4 here. Anyway, the keyboard case is magnetic, so you can put the tablet on the keyboard case and just, um, just use it like a keyboard. There is also a case without the keyboard. If you can buy the tablet bundled with the keyboard case, that would be great because having a keyboard is useful. Let's look at the pricing and bundles available. So this is the official Huawei store on Shopee.sg. The prices that you see here should be similar to Lazada.sg. So at the time of making this video, the Mate Pad 10.4 with 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage is 268 Singapore dollars. This is the Wi-Fi model and from what I can see here, this is listed with Kirin 820. So as I have mentioned so many times, Kirin 820 will give you much better performance compared to the Kirin 710A. If you need more internal storage, there is this model with 4 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. The Wi-Fi model is 448 Singapore dollars. The LTE model is 548 Singapore dollars. If you want to spend $448, I would say go with the Mate Pad Pro 10.8 from 2021, which has 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. And the processor, the Snapdragon 870, is significantly more powerful compared to what you can find on the Mate Pad 10.4. The main selling points for the Mate Pad 10.4 with 128 gigs of storage is actually the keyboard bundle that is included and you have the LTE option. If you don't need LTE and if you don't need the keyboard case, you can just go with the cheaper model which is just 268 Singapore dollars. 64 gigs of storage is on the lower side, but there is the micro SD card slot, so you can pay another $40, $50 to get 256 gigs of micro SD card storage. So is this worth the money? Now that you can install Google Play Store so easily on this tablet, this is definitely worth considering if you want to get a tablet and if you have a budget of less than 300 Singapore dollars. The pricing for this is really competitive. The specifications and the performance are within my expectations of how a budget tablet should perform. I mean, with a budget tablet, there will be limitations and there are no surprises with this tablet. It looks good and it performs reasonably well. So if you guys have any questions regarding this tablet, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. See you guys again. Bye.